Welcome to Naresh Technologies. I am Bangaraju and this is the continuation series of our ASP.NET videos. So, in the last video, I was uh, explaining about how to submit the data to different pages based on success and failure. So, what we have done, we created three pages. One is login.aspx and uh, the second one is success and the failure. So, if user is valid, user is valid, we are submitting to or we are launching a page or a web form called as success.aspx and if user is invalid, we are launching another web form called as failure.aspx. Like this, we are just launching up different web forms in this context, fine. How did we do that? Uh, let us uh, click glance on the things, run the login form and it is a simple login form where we have just validated the user is a valid user or not. If it is a valid user, we are launching success.aspx and uh, invalid user, we are launching failure.aspx. Admin, admin, valid user. So, this is going to launch us a success page and invalid user, this is going to launch us failure page. And what is the logic behind this? Go to login. Yes. If the username is admin and if the password is admin, we are going to success.aspx, always failure.aspx. So, to transfer the control from the current page to another page, to transfer the control from the current page to another page, we have used two different mechanisms. One is server.transfer and the second one is response.redirect. So, what is the difference between these two? Today, let us just try to understand about the difference between server.transfer and response.redirect. What are the differences we have between a server.transfer and a response.redirect? Fine. The first difference what we have between a server.transfer and response.redirect is, see, first let me demonstrate how the server.transfer executes. Now, I am opening the login page, this is my first request what I am going to make for the page and the first request for a page is always called as a get request. The first request to a page is always called as a get request. A request goes to the server asking for a page, which page? Login.aspx. Generally, we open a browser and the URL, HTTP something, local host, okay, this is the URL and when I hit the URL, Immediately, a request goes to the server and the server is going to take the request and send back the page now and that is what we call as a get request. We call it as a get request and now I am entering a username, I am entering a password, valid username password. Now, I click on the login button. When I click on the login button, a request again goes to the server, a request again goes to the server and this is called as a post request. We call this as a post request. First request is called get request and the next request onwards we call that as a post request. So, when I click on the login button, again the request goes to the server, okay. And uh, for which page, the request going to the server for which page is a post back, we did not specify any post back URL. And because a post back URL is not specified for the login button, the default post back is always same page. So, when I click on this, the data is submitted back to the same page. And on this page, what is the logic we have implemented? We are checking the username value, password value, if both are admin, admin. Then we are calling server.transfer. We are calling server.transfer. So, when I call server.transfer, that is, when I click on this button, all the logic executes on the server and I am entering a valid username admin, valid password admin. So, immediately condition is true and server.transfer will transfer the control to the second page. Which page? Success.aspx. Server.transfer will transfer the control to success.aspx. Where this happens? This happens on the server. This happens on the server. And now, 
the success.aspx is going to send the output to the browser. Success.aspx is going to send the output to the browser and this information is not known to the, this information is not known to the browser. That is why if you watch it, when I click on the login, when I click on the login, I got the output, this is success page. But see, the browser is still showing you as login.aspx. Why? The output came from success.aspx, no? But the browser is not aware of it. Why? Browser sent request to login.aspx and browser is still thinking that the output came from login.aspx only. But login.aspx, what it has done? It has transferred the control to success.aspx. But output is received from success.aspx, but browser is still thinking my request went to login.aspx, so I got the response also from login.aspx. See, what happens? First, um, I am sending a request to the, uh, so this is my browser and this is the server, that is the web server. And now, I am just going to make my first request make my first request and uh, do not forget the first request is always called as a get request. I am sending my first request to the web server, it is a get request. So, what the web server is doing? The web server sends back login.aspx, sends back login.aspx. Now, login.aspx is open for me, I entered a username, I entered password. And after entering my username and password, I click on the login button and that is the postback request. That is the next request or a postback request. And postback request is called as a post request. We call it the post request. Again, the request goes to the server. The request going to which page? The request is going to the same page, login.aspx. Okay. Um, what the web server is going to do now? Uh, in the web server, the login.aspx page will execute, reads the values and transfers the control to success.aspx. Login.aspx transfers control to success.aspx. Success.aspx and now Response come, response comes from success.aspx, success.aspx. So, the response is now coming from success.aspx, but the browser is still thinking that it is getting the response from the login.aspx only because the transfer happened within the server, the transfer happened within the server, where it happened on the server from login.aspx, the control directly jump to success.aspx, that is what happens. That is why you notice this browser, the browser is still showing you as login.aspx, but not as success.aspx. So, this is how the execution takes place in case of server.transfer. Then what about response.redirect? Watch. In response.redirect, when we used response.redirect, in case of failure we used, okay, fine. We will try response.redirect also now. Now, come back again. Uh, I am giving a wrong password. When I give a wrong password and hit on the login and hit on the login, I am getting the failure page. But see here, the browser is showing you as failure.aspx. It is not showing as login. It is showing as failure.aspx. But the browser, is the browser going to know from where the output came from? Yes. Why? Because, see. Now, again, we are talking about Failure now, in case of failure what happens? In the first case I demonstrated success, now I am demonstrating failure. Browser and a web server, uh, I am going to send my first request to the page. First request, get request and what I got now? I am just going to get the login page. Okay. Now, I am entering invalid username and password. I am entering invalid username and password and clicking on the button and there is a post request now. So, what happens? Login.aspx redirects to redirects to failure.aspx. Redirects to failure.aspx. That is, 
a response is sent to the browser a response is sent to the browser and we call this as a 302 what are 302 i'll explain you we call this as a 302 what are 302 we'll talk on it 302 a response is sent to the browser informing it informing it a fresh request a fresh request has to be sent to sent to the server for failure.aspx so what happens login.aspx redirects to failure.aspx that is a response is sent to the browser what we call it 302 informing informing it a fresh request a fresh request has to be sent to the server for failure.aspx means i got a response now what response the 302 response what is the 302 response the 302 response in the sense a new request has to be made to the server for so and so page for which page failure.aspx so what happens you know again the browser is going to send a request to which page failure.aspx and again understand it is sending the first request to the failure.aspx so again this is considered as a first request to failure.aspx a first request to failure.aspx again this is a get request why because you are sending a new request to failure.aspx and every first request is a get request and now server what the server is sends back sends back failure.aspx so we have an additional round trip here what are the additional round trip when did the failure the server sent a response to the browser informing the browser you must send a fresh request to the server again you must send a fresh request to the server browser received that particular response and again sent a new request to the server so there is a failure uh, there is a there is a round trip here what is the round trip from the server the control came to the browser and again from the browser the control is going to the server sends back failure.aspx again i'll get the response and don't forget this again a first request to failure.aspx and this is again a get request this is again a get request because this is a first request it is a get request so here this is a postback request only response came off but here in the postback request i am not getting a response i am giving i am getting a response code what is that 302 302 means a redirection response basically instruction comes to the browser asking the browser to send a fresh request for a target page again again browser will send a request and the response will come back that is the difference that is why in this case browser knows what it knows it has a sent a request to failure dot aspx and if you watch this carefully here it is showing as failure.aspx and there is one additional round trip that happens in case of response.redirect when compared with server.transfer this is how the execution will take place now understanding the differences now understanding the differences what are the differences the first difference the first difference is in case of server.transfer the transfer from one page to another page happens on the server only happens on the server only and it is unknown to the browser in case of response.redirect the transfer from one page to another page happens from the browser from the browser so browser is aware of the page from where the output is coming from second difference faster because 
it happens on the server slower because there is an additional round trip there is an additional round trip involved here because there is an additional round trip involved here because there is an additional round trip involved here this is going to be slower in execution next can transfer only to dot aspx pages can transfer only to dot aspx pages can transfer either to dot aspx or dot html pages also in the first case you can transfer only to aspx pages but in the second case you can transfer both to aspx as well as html pages also next previous page previous page object is available in the memory and can be accessed in the new page previous page is not at all previous page object is not available because the request is going from the browser the request is going from the browser so in the first case previous page values are accessible the previous page object is available and the previous page values are accessible we'll see what is the advantage of the previous page and how to access the values in the previous page we'll see in our next video okay fine next can transfer only to pages that are present in the sites of current server current web server in the sites of current web server can transfer the controls can transfer to pages that are present under the sites of current server current web server or even an external web server you can transfer to the web pages that are present in the current web server as well as you can transfer to the external web server also that is also going to be possible like this we have some differences that are present between the server dot transfer and the response dot direct okay so which one uh, should i use the question arises now which one should i use right, which one should i use uh, purely depends upon the requirement so generally whenever we have multiple options whenever we have multiple options comparing this is better that is better will only be foolish why because we can just we use a different mechanism in a different scenario we can't use the same in all the cases so sometimes they suggest us go for using server dot transfer within the server only we can transfer of the control from one page to another page and the response comes up to the browser but sometimes they ask us to go for response dot redirect why because i want to transfer to an html page i want to transfer to an external page so in that type of scenarios they clearly suggest us don't use response dot redirect sorry don't use server dot transfer better go for using response dot redirect so it is not at all a point to discuss which one is better both are better in their own sense in their own situations so the situation decides whether to go for using a server dot transfer or whether to go, go for using a response dot redirect thank you for watching the video for more videos please subscribe to our youtube channel narish it